This is part 22 of Angular 2 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to pass user actions or user entered values or selections from the child component to the parent component using output properties. Along the way, we'll also discuss creating custom events using Angular Event Emitter class. And finally, what is ng container directive and its use. So here is what we want to be able to do. At the moment, we have the correct count of employees displayed next to each of these radio buttons. We discussed how to achieve this using input properties in our previous video. When we select any of these radio buttons, at the moment nothing happens. What we want to be able to do is, depending on the radio button selection, we want to display the correct set of employees in this table. For example, if we have the male radio button selected, then we want to display the four male employees in this table. And if we have female selected, then only display the two female employees in this table. If we have the all radio button selected, then we want to display all the six employees, both male and female employees in this table. So to achieve this, we are going to make use of output properties. So we have these radio buttons within this employee count component, which is our child component and the table is present within the parent component which is employee list component. So whenever we make these selections within the child component, we want to pass that user action from the child component to the parent component that is our employee list component using output properties. This is the same project that we started in part 20 of this video series. First, let's look at the change required in our child component which is employee count component. Whenever a user selects a radio button, we want to raise a custom event from our child component, which is our employee count component. So the parent component can be notified about that event and the parent component can decide which employees to display in the table. To raise the custom event from our child component, we are going to make use of output property. To be able to use output property, we will have to first import it from Angular Core just like how we have imported input property. So first, let's import output from Angular Core. To create a custom event, we are going to make use of event emitter class. So let's also import event emitter class from Angular Core. Before we create our custom event, first let's create a property within the employee count component class. I'm going to call this property selected radio button value. So this property is going to keep track of the value of the radio button that we have selected, all, male or female. So the data type of this property is going to be string and I'm going to initialize it to a default value of all. Next, let's create our custom event. I'm going to call our custom event count radio button selection changed. And to turn this to an event, I'm going to decorate it with at output decorator, which we have imported from Angular Core right here. And to create our custom event, we are going to make use of this event emitter class, which again we imported from Angular Core. So whenever this custom event is raised, what we intend to do is we want to pass the selected radio button value that is all male or female, which is a string as the event data. So we want to create a custom event whose event data is of type string. This event data is commonly called as event payload. So the event payload for our custom event, count radio button selection changed event is string. So event emitter of string equals new event emitter of string. So basically this is our custom event, count radio button selection changed. Finally, let's create a method which is going to raise this custom event. So after all our properties, let's create a function. I'm going to call this function on radio button selection change. And all this function is going to do is raise our custom event. So this dot, what's our custom event? Count radio button selection changed. And we are going to use the emit method to raise the event. And remember, what is our event payload? It is of type string, the selected radio button value. And here we have a property which is going to keep track of the selected radio button value. So let's pass that as the event payload. So to the emit method, we are going to pass 
this property selected radio button value. So this line right here is going to raise our custom event. Now let's quickly recap the changes that we have done within the child component class so far. First, we have imported output and event emitter from AngularCo and then we have created a property which is going to keep track of the selected radio button value and then created a custom event using output property and event emitter class and then created a method which is going to raise our custom event passing it the selected radio button value as the event payload. Next, let's look at the changes required within the view template of our employee count component. So let's open employee count dot component dot html. Here we have the three radio buttons. The first radio button displays all. So let's set the value attribute of this radio button to all. For this radio button we'll set it to male and for the third one female. We'll do that in just a bit. But before that let's also use two-way data binding. To use two-way data binding we draw banana in a box and then use ng model directive. And we want to bind to this property within our component class selected radio button value. Remember this is the property which keeps track of the selected radio button value. And we are passing that property which contains the selected radio button value as the event payload to our custom event which is count radio button selection changed. So let's bind to this property. So with this two-way data binding in place, anytime the selection changes, this property selected radio button value is automatically updated with that new selected radio button value. And that is being passed as the event payload for our custom event. And finally, let's also bind to the change event. So let's use event binding. The event of the radio button is changed. So any time the selection of the radio button changes, we want to call our custom method that we have written here. So this method raises the custom event, passing it the event payload. So we want to call this method when the change event of the radio button is raised. So that's going to raise our custom event. Now let's do the same thing for the rest of the two buttons. First for the male radio button and then for our female radio button. And within our employee count component class, I'm also going to make one more change. So after we raise our custom event, I'm just going to log to the console the selected radio button value. So to this method, let's pass this dot select a radio button value. So we can quickly test the changes that we have made so far. So let's save all these changes. Now before we reload this web page, notice the radio button selected. We have female radio button selected. When we reload the web page, it's going to default to all. That's because within our component class, we have set the default value for this property to all. And we are using two-way data binding with this property. Since we have a default value of all and since we are using two-way data binding, when we reload this web page, it's going to default to all. So let's reload this web page. Notice it defaults to all. And now let's launch our developer tools by pressing F12. And we are on the console tab at the moment. Notice whenever the selection changes. Now when I select mail, notice to the console we are logging mail. Similarly, when I select female, we have that selected radio button value passed. Okay, so our custom event within our child component is working as expected. So all that is left right now is to pass the selected radio button value to the parent component. And the parent component can then decide what employees to display in this table. So let's see how to achieve that. Before we look at the changes required in the parent component, let's quickly recap the changes we have made within the view template of our employee count component. We have set value attribute of all the three radio buttons. We have used two-way data binding and bound to the change event of each of the radio buttons. Now let's look at the changes required within the TypeScript file of our parent component, which is employee list component. So within this class, I'm going to introduce a property. I'm going to call it 
selected employee count radio button and I'm going to set it a default value of all. So basically this property within our employee list component is going to keep track of which radio button is selected. So we can decide which employees to display. By default it's going to display all the employees in this table so we have set the default value for this property to all. Next let's create a method that will be called when the custom event within our child component is raised. So when the custom event within the child component is raised it's going to pass the selected radio button value as the event data which will be received by the method that we are going to create here. So I'm going to call this method on employee count radio button change. So when that is changed, remember the event data is string. So I'm going to create a parameter here, selected radio button value. And the type for this is going to be string. And this method is not going to return anything. So let's set the return type to void. So we will receive into this event handler method the selected radio button value. And what are we going to do with that value? We will update this property which is keeping track which radio button is selected. So this dot selected employee count radio button equals selected radio button value. So on the next slide we have the two changes which we have just made in the component class of our employee list component. Finally, let's look at the changes required within the view template of our employee list component. So let's open employee list.component.html and what we want to be able to do is bind to the custom event that we are raising within our child component. The custom event is count radio button selection change and notice within the view template of our employee list component, that's our parent component, we're using the child component selector as a directive. So here we are going to bind to the custom event raised by that child component. So for event binding we use pair of parentheses. Within parentheses we specify the name of our custom event and then we are going to specify the name of the method as the event handler. Now within our employee list component class we have created this method right here which we want as the event handler method. So let's specify this method right here and we know this method is going to receive the selected radio button value as the event payload and for this method to be able to do that we will pass the dollar event object. So this object is automatically going to receive the selected radio button value and what is this method going to do with that value? It simply updates this property and we are going to use this property to determine which employees to display in the table. We are going to use ngif to decide which employees to display. So within the view template on this tr element right here where we are using the structural directive ng4 we are also going to use ngif. So star ngf equals and remember we are going to use this property selected employee count radio button. So if the selected employee count radio button value is all then we want to display all employees. You know, this is going to return true. If it returns true, it will add that respective TR to the table. Or we want to check the employee gender. Notice we are getting employee object into this variable. So as we are looping through each employee object, we want to compare the employee object gender value. So we have the employee object let's compare the gender property value. So if the selected radio button value which is male, female or all, if it's male for example and if the employee object that we are iterating over, if the gender of that employee is also male then this is going to return true. If it returns true then that respective TR will be added to the T body of the table which means we will be able to see that employee. Now using two structural directives on a same element is not allowed in Angular. Let's see what's going to happen if we do this. Let's save all our changes and reload our page. Notice nothing happens beyond this message. Now let's launch our developer tools and investigate what's going on. Let's look at the message we have right here. Notice it says can't have multiple template bindings on one element. 
use only one attribute named template or prefixed with star. So if you look at the HTML we have right here, we're using two structural directives on one element. So with this error message, basically Angular is complaining that we can't use both ng4 and ngf on one element. So to overcome this issue, let's make use of the ng container directive. Just after the t body element, let's use the ng container directive and then move the closing tag after the closing tr element. And then let's move this ng for structural directive onto the ng container element. So now we don't have two structural directives on one element. So let's save our changes and reload our web page. Notice now the employees are displayed as expected and we have the all radio button selected. Now when we select mail, only the mail employee should be displayed, but then we have all the employees displayed still. Let's investigate why. The custom event of our child component is not being handled as expected. Now if you look at the event here, instead of specifying our child component custom event name, which is count radio button selection changed, we are actually specifying the event handler method name. So the same method name is specified here. That's why the event is not being handled. So let's specify our custom event within our child component as the event target and then this is the event handler method. So let's save our changes and reload this web page one more time. And now as the selection changes, look at that. The respective employees are displayed in the table as expected. So here we have those two changes we made in the view template of our parent component which is our employee list component. Thank you for listening and have a great day.